So welcome all to another video chapter in the life of Sapper Woodworking. It's now winter in Indiana and we've got some snow coming down in the back of the shop. But a couple of days ago, I was digging through my scrap pile and came across these three chunks of mahogany that I've cored. I had a chalk written on here of 2012, so they've been sitting around for a while. So I thought I'd pull them out and see if we can't turn them into something. So I think rather than just go ad hoc on these, I think I'm just going to, uh, I think I'm just going to try to maybe turn these into a small bowl with a uh, matching lid. If I don't like how the lid works, then maybe we'll grab another piece of scrap and turn that as a lid. But I'm going to try to make the lid and the base and the body of this uh, little dish out of the same material. So let's have at it and see what happens. So I'm going to take my pieces over to my joiner because the uh, sides on two of the pieces were kind of cupped from sitting around too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and flatten those on both sides to make it uh, suitable for gluing. And uh, this, I believe in the US, we call this a joiner, but in most of the rest of the world and in Europe, it's referred to as the planer. And what we call in the US a planer, I believe is referred to in the rest of the world as a surfacer. I've now got the pieces flat and ready to glue, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use my compass and mark a circle on these and cut out a lot of the material ahead of time on the bandsaw. And that'll save me a lot of time on the lathe of having to make these round. This blank is about six inches or about 150 millimeters. And I'm not sure exactly how, what size the, the bowl will end up, but that's about the starting point with these roughed out blocks. Okay, we're now on to the gluing process, and this is a pretty standard glue up. I'm applying glue to two of the mated jointed edges that were made nice and perfectly flat. And uh, there was one particular design choice here, and that's when I made it up the two pieces, but whether I wanted the end grain on each of the pieces to match up on the same part of the bowl, or put those two pieces 90 degrees perpendicular to each other so that you would see kind of an end grain, edge grain combination as you were looking at the bowl from different angles. And I thought that might be a little bit uh, more of an attractive product at the end. And you'll kind of see that once we get to the end of the video and the finished project, how one part of it's kind of more typical lightweight uh, edge grain mahogany color and the other parts a little bit darker why the bull's turning and that has to do with the uh, orientation of the grain and I just made that decision on the fly and went with the alternate colors. So I've got to leave the two pieces that I'm gluing up for the base of the bowl and the clamps for at least a half an hour but I'll probably let that go for um, maybe an hour or so until the glue cures somewhat. So I've just taken the third piece and I've mounted that using a standard flace plate on the lathe and I'm going to start the process of creating the lid. Again, I, at this point, I'm taking a uh, carbide tip tool, which is a perfect tool to create the recess for the lid. And here we've uh, just pushing this perpendicular to the edge of the bowl and creating the edge that will eventually fit inside the, uh, the base of the bowl. And here I'm just cleaning out some of the material on the inside to create that recess. Now that I've got the bottom of the lid kind of defined, I'm going to start uh, removing some of the excess material on what will become the top of the lid. Uh, this piece is way too thick for what I want the final dimensions of the lid to be, so I'm kind of just removing a lot of this material to get an idea of how, how thick I actually want that lid. So 
So I've got the lid flipped around and mounted on a coal chuck. And I'll have some shots a little bit later in this video of how this uh, coal chuck actually works. But here I'm just removing the rest of that material from the top of the lid. And my original idea was just to have a single uh, spire point rising from the middle of the lid that would be used as a handhold. And at one point as I was removing material, my gouge went a little bit too deep and it kind of changed my design and I liked it better um, to create a more of a recessed uh, hold. And here's where that took place. I just went a little too deep and I created that little recess. And at that point I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go with that and make that design and it turned out way nicer in my opinion. So I finished the sanding of the lid. Now we'll pop that off the, the cold chuck and we'll take a peek at how it looks. I'm really happy how that, that top piece turned out. It wasn't my original plan, but it functions way better in the end. Now I moved over to uh, finish the actual lid and I'm using the standard Waco finishing oil. And when I get to the part when I'm finishing the base of the bowl, I'll go into a little bit more detail on the processes of using the Waco. Now that the base of the bowl, the two pieces that I had uh, glued together are thoroughly dry, I think it's been a good hour and a half that those have uh, been in the clamps and the glue is cured. I'm going to start the process to make this blank exactly round as well as to create a little recess in what would be the bottom of the bowl that will hold my, uh, that will hold the four jaw metal chuck so I can flip the blank around and work on the inside of the bowl. If uh, so far you have any comments or questions, you can always write them below. And if you enjoyed this video so far and would like to see more like it, uh, please click on the thumbs up button and the uh, subscribe button on the bottom right part of your screen and you'll be notified when uh, we post additional videos. So here I'm just taking my carbide tool and kind of removing enough material on the bottom so I could uh, fit the Ford jaw chuck in there and uh, flip reverse mount it. So here I've taken my lid and I'm putting it against what will be the top of the bottom of the bowl. And you can kind of see the contrast in the colors between the finished uh, mahogany and the raw mahogany. But I was just judging on uh, how much material I had to remove from the outside of the base to make a smooth transition from the base to the lid. And I'm just going to go through the process here of squaring up everything and removing all the excess material on the interior of the bowl. And eventually I'll get to the point where I will slowly remove material uh, to the outside of the interior to make sure the lid is a nice, tight and consistent fit. And at this point, I move to the outside just to get an idea of you know, what this bowl might look like in relation to how much material I need to remove on the inside to make the lid actually fit. And it uh, turned out to look a little bit like an acorn at the end, so I'm now referring to this as the acorn, the acorn bowl. I was hoping to make this lid a nice snug fit on the base of the bowl, so here I'm just using my carbide scraper and just removing a little bit of material on multiple passes until the lid just fit nice and snug. And it gets to the point now where I can almost lift the base of the bowl up by the lid and it's got a great fit. And there we finished it with about five tries.
Now that the sanding's been finished, we'll remove the bowl from the chuck and we'll take a look at how it looks with the lid attached for the first time. I'm really happy how the shape turned out and uh, you can kind of see the alternating grain that I talked about prior to the glue up, but so far so good. I'm really happy with this. Now here's a, a shot of the cold chuck. It's got these little rubber grommets there centered and as I turn the little uh, chuck key, it expands each quarter of the cold chuck and it grabs a, a, on the inside of the bowl. And this is always a nervous part for any woodworker because if you crank that cold chuck down a little too tight, you could easily crack the bowl. And if you don't make it tight enough, the bowl might come flying off there while you're actually smoothing out the bottom. But it's just a thing you need to do a bunch of times to figure out exactly how much tension you can put on that chuck so you don't damage your product or cause an accident. So here I'm just taking a couple different uh, variety of lathe tools and smoothing out the bottom. And the purpose of this step is just to remove all evidence of how the bowl was held and uh, turned originally. Now, after all that turning, we have the moment of truth. As any woodworker will tell you, this is probably the best part of the gig. And you finally get to see what the project looks like with some finish. So here's the lid that was done earlier. And I'm just gonna put a couple of coats of Waco natural Danish oil on there. And then after that cures for about 72 hours, we'll top coat that with uh, yet as undetermined finish, probably my go-to finish, which is water locks left over from a previous project. So let's see what this looks like. So Waco is pretty straightforward finish. You splash on a coat about as thick as you want. Just drip it on there. And let that soak into the wood for 15 or so, 20 minutes. And then we'll splash on another coat as much as I'd like. Let that sit for about another 15 minutes. And then wipe off the excess. And some folks like to use that as their final finish, but I'll go ahead and uh, had a top coat of some kind of finish, like I said, probably water locks, which would be a good protectant because this bowl is probably going to get touched quite a bit. But if it was just something that was going to sit on the shelf, shelf and never get used, I'd probably just leave it with the Watco. But since it will get some use and abuse, we'll go ahead and top coat that for some protection. So, uh, there we go. We'll be back 72 hours and put that at top coat on there. The bowl is now finished with its uh, final coating. And I'm uh, just taking a Forstner bit and milling out a slight recess in the bottom to later epoxy in our new Sapper woodworking little finished medallions. And these are kind of a cool little product. And if you have a question on where you can get these, just send me a comment or an instant message and I'll let you know where you can purchase these. It's a really cool little thing to add to your final bowls and any of your other woodworking projects. Well, here we have a great example of the joys of woodworking. Here we had three pieces of random scrap wood that had been sitting in a box for like eight years. We put it through a process using various woodworking tools and primarily the lathe. And we have a end cool looking bowl that will sit on a shelf and be enjoyed for many years to come and possibly even given to a close friend as a gift. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions and comments, just let us know below. Thanks and have a great day.